time. Last time it was like giving me a hard time. So is it recording? It says it's yes. recording. it's recording. It doesn't tell me, it just says it. Okay, welcome everybody. I'm so glad you're here. My name is Iman Aline. Welcome to our Launch Your Kind Academy info session. This is going for the 2024 cohorts. So I'm excited to have everybody here and it gets started, all right? Um, let's see. So Kind Academy started in 2016 with the idea that every child deserves a joyful, individualized and personalized environment to learn and that is what we've done and we're really excited if you can please go ahead and pop into the chat where you were at in the world uh and also maybe where you're at in your educational journey or like teaching journey or micro school journey things like that okay i'd love to know where everybody is all right this is me this is a really fancy long bio um i'll give you the the bullet points because i know everybody can read um i am an author i'm a speaker i'm a writer i am a uh, an educator. Um, I have been teaching for over a decade at this point, and um, our program is fairly successful. Our We run schools called Kind Academy, um, and we also now help other people launch their own micro schools. Over the years, we knew that what we were doing was right, and then COVID hit, and it really made us realize that what we were doing was right, and everybody else started realizing what we were doing was right. And um, Pretty much after that, a lot of people started wanting to fund what we were doing, which was a really big deal and started awarding us for the kind of amazingness that we were doing. So that's me. Uh, we've been featured in some news stories, kind of get a little bit of attention for it. Um, and I'm gonna, from there, we're gonna go ahead and move on. <laughs> I'm a little bit shy about like all of that. I'm just like, just let me teach. Like, I love to teach and that's really it. Uh, I this is Rochelle, the founder yeah. of- Hold on, hold on. I think, I think for to tell about your story. <laughs> so I usually go through that really quickly. Hi, Jai. Hi, everyone walking in. Uh, we are loving cameras on if you can. If you can't, I totally understand. I promise you I will not judge if your makeup isn't done or your hair isn't done or anything like that. If you follow me on TikTok, I get on there with my bonnet on if I have to because I'm trying to you know do what I got to do. So, um, so we don't mind about any of that. But if you can, awesome. If not, I understand. Um, my story, I'll, I'll tell a little bit more. Rochelle's always like, you have to tell them. Um, so I am a high school dropout. Um, I got my GED. I know, right? <laughs> it, it feels like a lifetime ago, but it really was. Oh, and really kind of like sad, really. So we have a micro school kind of right in the middle of the uh, of Coral Springs, um, right by a middle school. And every day the middle schoolers hang out right, you know, by our school, which is pretty awesome. They go into a bagel spot that's right next door. And the other day the police were called on them. And my heart was like so upset. And they arrested one of the one of the girls there actually had, uh, she was on house arrest and she was not supposed to be there. And this is, I'm being really vulnerable right now. Um, but that was me, like I was arrested at, you know what I mean? 13 years old, 14 years old, 15 years old. And I was crying because I was like, oh my gosh, like, and they were like, she's a criminal. And I was like, no, she's like, she's probably one of the smartest people in, you know what I mean? And, and just isn't being challenged enough or has a lot of stuff going on. And it just made me like kind of a remember that that was my life, you know, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, and how easily you can turn your life around into something uh, else if you have a passion for it. So that's kind of it um, on that. Um, but I truly do believe that education is like the difference between um, being able to really be successful and not just like the traditional education, but really like in education doing something that you really, really love. So that's kind of why and what was kind of the beginning of this. I'm not gonna tell too much more about that background, but I am a high school dropout. I did go on to get my associates, my bachelor's and then my master's and just kind of sucked up all the education I could once it was something I was interested in. So now I run micro schools and help other people do that. Um, but yeah, so that's my that's my heartbeat. Um, okay, and this is Rochelle who's also very, very amazing. She always gives me the best like, like, <laughs> like the best introduction. Uh, I did meet Rochelle like five years ago now, maybe. Um, a very long time ago in the micro school world. And um, she wanted me to do, like to be a part of another type of micro school thing. And I was like, ah, I really have to do this micro school thing. And she's like, well, we're gonna figure out how to work together. And years and years have passed and she did. Um, so now we work together and I love it. And I'm super, super proud to introduce her as our coaching like director, and gonna be, you're gonna be seeing a lot of her face, probably even more than mine sometimes, at least when it comes to like coaching, because she is a genius at that. She actually helped coach me in the beginning of my journey here. So there you go. Thank you. <laughs>
I appreciate that. It, um, oh, you guys, um, there's a, there's a, mo we're in a moment in time and because of the pandemic primarily exposed to parents, what is happening with school and they're like, and so there's a chance here and, and micro schools, I think are, I don't know, I get a little preachy, but micro schools are the thing. And, um, and Iman has figured out how to do really cool things for kids that are not served. If, if you care about BIPOC kids and LGBTQ kids, you're in the right place. And, um, and if you care about all kids who need safety because they haven't had it, like this is the right place. And I just like, I love children. And I think a huge part of why children tend to get along with me really well is because I see them as equals. And, um, and that matters a lot to me. Like it matters a lot to me that, that they are just humans that are smaller than me that have as much like right to input in the world as I do. And it makes a huge difference. Anyway, that was random, but Iman, you're on. <laughs> she, just, she didn't tell you about who she was. So she founded an amazing, amazing program. You guys, pro you guys have probably have like seen me and her and she and I on a lot of the same phone calls. Um, she runs a, founded a really beautiful organization called the Micro School Dream with the two amazing people you see who are not on this call today, but who are also really, really amazing at coaching and teaching people how to open micro schools, Tom Bogle and Lorianne. And Rochelle is the CEO of that company and just amazing at inspiring people and making sure that they know that they are capable of doing this thing. So I'm glad to have her as a part of this team as we help to launch hopefully at least 25 micro schools within the next six months. That that sounds crazy when I say it like that. Right? <laughs> um, OK, so either way, um, I laugh a lot. Uh, I That's something that we do in our school a lot and our teachers do a lot and our kids do a lot. So if that's something that kind of throws you off, I'm sorry. We are joyful. And that is a big part of, I think, why our community is so happy all the time too. Um, okay. So amazing. Who are we? I'll give you guys a little bit more of a backstory. This is a bit of our timeline. I did start my nature school. Uh, we started off as a nature school in nature outside. We had no building for years and um, we were just a little community in a local park. If you're in the area, I was at Terramore Park was our first little program. Uh, I see some people in Sunrise. We were at Oak Hammock after that, which is a beautiful, beautiful space. And now there's another nature school that just started that was in our nature school seven years ago, who's now doing very similar things that we did back then. So. Um, and then we moved, and then we partnered with a community center and we opened a micro school in a community center. Um, and then um, we helped uh, Compass Outreach, if you're local, start their first micro school in Fort Lauderdale that was able to accept state funding. And then we went on, uh, COVID happened and we had to close our nature school. <laughs> like it was like the day of COVID, it was like March 16th. I was like, why is nobody here? Like I did not know what was happening. I didn't watch the news and I was in shock. And then we, um, and then we launched our virtual school because of that. Um, got onto out school and um, people started seeing what we were doing, opened our micro school. We won the Vela, uh, which was a super important kind of key first time that anyone said, hey, let me give you some money. And then we won the YAS prize. We made semifinals, which is like considered consider the Pulitzer of Education. Very, very prestigious award, um, basically just for being really unique in the way that we decided to do things. And uh, Oh, yes, Oslin, I have seen your name. Oh, that's super cool. Sorry, uh, Oslin just said in the chat, I have seen your name and I've seen your videos. Amazing stuff, Oslin. I'm so glad you're here. Okay, awesome. All right, perfect. All right, so now we um, opened our third location um, and we have the online virtual school, which is incredibly successful. And we just got another space that we're gonna open in kind of Coral Springs East location. We just got, we're gonna sign the, the lease hopefully to the next week. So that'll be four corporate locations. Uh, last year, we helped to launch 10 other micro school founders. And this year we hope to help launch at least 25, hopefully 30 or 40 more. Um, so that's kind of who we are. Um, who we are just as a community though, we're really a group of parents, educators, stakeholders who seek to change the world in a positive way through education. Um, uh, my quote right now is Nelson Mandela, education is the most powerful weapon that you can use to change the world. We are in a place right now in the world where there are a lot of things happening that, are, that break my heart. 
Uh, a lot of children are being harmed by that. That breaks my heart. I'm not gonna cry on this call. I'm gonna at least try not to, but I truly do believe that with education, with teaching people how to speak to each other, with teaching people how to speak to their children, how to relate to each other. Um, I think that that, because those are the future leaders. So I think if they can have a mindset and if we can teach them how to solve conflicts in a peaceful manner, I think that is going to be the future of changing the world. So that's kind of my dream, the vision that we have for Kind Academy, okay? Um, we're passionate about what we do. We're kind to ourselves. We're kind to our students. We're kind to each other. Uh, we understand child development and brain development. Like that's a really, really, really big piece. Um, we're excited to be able to learn from our kids. Like we don't see ourselves as uh, sages on the stage. Even me talking this much right now is, is hard for me because like usually my kids are doing the talking um, or we're communicating. My kids are teaching me, we're teaching each other. Um, we're really about being like a guide on the side so we can facilitate learning. We can uh, lead students to access things that they're interested in learning and try to make even the kind of boring learning as fun as possible is really the big thing. Um, we're models for the behavior. A lot of times um, I was in a traditional public school um, and one of the things that I noticed was that the teachers were, A, the admin was talking to the teachers like they were children and not the, in the nicest way. And then the teachers were talking to the children like they were dogs in, and not even a way that I would treat my dog. And I was really taken aback by that. And, and then kids bullied each other and, I, and the teachers were like, I don't understand why. And I was like, it's really obvious. So a big key thing about who we are and what we do is we are the role models in our classrooms for the way we want our students to treat each other, okay? Um, and that's a really, really, I think that that changes things a lot. All right, I'm looking, yeah, that's a good quote, I like it. All right, some of the, kind of, I like the four C's. I always like, like the word, the letter C always comes up in like all of our frameworks, um, but the big four C's of 21st century learning, if you haven't seen this before, is connection, critical thinking, creativity, and collaboration are really big key parts of what we do. Um, some people call those soft skills. Uh, everybody is aware that AI is now taking over. I'm actually taking a class tomorrow on how to launch our own AI app. And I really do believe in AI being an amazing key part of our future. But what I do understand is that AI is not going to have access to some of these things. The connection that human connection can only bring, I don't, I, I believe that we're still always going to need that connection with our learners. Um, collaboration among people, I think, is always going to be a thing to make sure that our, our humanity continues on being creative, creating art. I know AI can create art, but they, they have like 10 fingers and 15 toes. And I don't know if they're ever going to get better at that, but I think humans just have a beautiful way of creating. And I just love to see that. So our students always have an opportunity to think critically, to ask questions, to kind of even like argue and debate in a way that is, why do I have to do it that way? And a lot of times they, if they can convince me of a different way to do it, I'm like, works for me. Um, so it really does work out that way in our programs. Um, and how this is how the actual launch your kind um, application process works. So a lot of you have probably I've seen your name. I actually have probably seen a few of your names twice or three times pop up. Um, and the cohort application is the big first step. Um, we've added some questions to it, but most likely if you've already done the application before those questions, Rochelle's going to get on a call with you more than likely you're going to be invited to an interview and she will ask you those questions there. So you can look at the application and see if you didn't get a chance to answer it. Some of those things are really big part of our philosophy. Um, next is going to be a lot of coaching that happens. Uh, Rochelle's team has done, has created something, designed something called a blueprint that is amazing. I had a chance to do a blueprint. It's like a coaching session on steroids. Um, and I really love the way that they do that. So every person in here, every person that applies and gets accepted into our cohort gets access to that blueprint meeting, which I think will give you really clear direction. Um, access to the community. So we have an amazing community of parents, educators, students, people in general, humans, and accessing that community has helped to accelerate a lot of people in our cohorts. And we wanna make sure that you have access to that. And then curriculum. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about all of these things before I give it all away. <laughs> so like, all right, so the application is not on that page, but here are some people that joined us last time. Everybody's not on here, but looking at these faces just gives me so much joy even now. Um, Tamiko, you will see, she is um, an amazing, um, branding specialist. She actually is the one that really asked me the question of what I want Kind Academy to feel like about 10 years ago. And it was like, I want it to feel like sunshine and rainbows. And I think that we've kind of helped accomplish that a bit. And she's helped to guide us on that. Um, but okay, the cohort application. 
Um, can you link to it, Rochelle, if you don't mind in the chat? I would love you forever. Even like infinity, I guess, I'd love you for now. Um, thank you so much. All right, so we are offering seats in two launch your kind cohorts. The first one is gonna begin the week of March 1st. That one's actually March 6th now, we got a date. It is going to be from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern time. So on Wednesday night, we really hope you can make that if you're invited to join us live. It's a really big key part of that. We really do, uh, we will record our sessions, but there is a big key part of being in person, <laughs> in Zoom, um, that we know helps to accelerate learning as well and collaborating during the co-working times that we will have in kind of helping each other and like group work. Um, all right, so first you're gonna submit the application for consideration. The, if you move to the next round, you're gonna complete the interview, most likely with Rochelle. I might be on some of those calls. If you're accepted, you can pay the investment amount up to $1,200. Full or partial scholarships are now available due to a wonderful, generous grant from a program called Stand Together, who I'm super grateful for, but that makes it accessible for everyone, which has always been our goal, even in our schools. Um, so it's gonna be kind of like a pay what you can type situation. So if you are like, I'm gonna be interested in scholarships, a lot of you put that there. Um, it's gonna be a pay what you can more than likely so that everybody can have access to this amazing program. Hey Mo. Hi everybody, I'm sorry if I didn't say hi to you. Some of my parents are here, like some of my, so I'm just like, um, so this is really cool to see your faces. Um, so the coaching is two hour weekly long ongoing Zooms for 10 weeks at this point. One-to-one -one coaching upon request based off our amazing community of micro school solutions. Um, we also have some people who are really amazing at legal stuff, some people that are amazing at uh, Emma, if you're in the state of Florida, the PEP scholarship. So different people that are really experts in what they do will be able to kind of communicate with you when you need it, okay? Uh, ongoing support. So even though that, that program is 10 weeks, hopefully at the end of 10 weeks, you kind of have a building or you have a space that you already know and you're starting to already access children. But now you're going to be at that point where you have students and you're like, okay, now what, right? So we still want to give you support after that. So you still will have access to us after that, okay? Um, ongoing support from us. Uh, and then the branding specialist that I told you about for Tamiko as well. Um, the community, like I said, I think that the catalyst of this, um, the catalyst of making sure that this went really fast was the community that we had last time. Some of us know, hi, Dr. Donna. Some of us uh, may have heard, you probably have heard about Play School Academy. I'm not sure if you're in Coral Springs, if you're nearby. Um, those, they were in our cohort last semester. It was actually two parents who came to us who, was, who were in our school and wanted to launch a micro school, Andrea and Gabby. And during the cohort, they were like, well, if we got together and put our heads together and put our money together, then we can open a micro school together. And they did, and it's already successful and already doing great. And they did that within about three to three months, I think. They decided about very, in April, that they were gonna do this. And by summer, they had an up and going school pretty much. Um, so that's the kind of like acceleration that I see happen when you're in these meetings together and having a community of people you can tap into, people you can partner with, people you can lean on that are nearby you, super, super important for making your growth happen fast, okay? Ah, you met Andrea, yes. Oh my gosh, I, yes, amazing, amazing stuff. Um, okay, so that is the talking about the community. Um, curriculum. So we have a ton of curriculum. We're on Teachers Pay Teachers as well and have always written curriculum for our learners. Every year we're like, we're gonna use the same curriculum we used last year and then every year we have different students and then we have to redesign it for the students that we have. Um, so we have a ton of curriculum. If you're an educator, you probably have a ton of curriculum too. So there is a reality that we will give you access to our curriculum, but what we've come to realize is that especially educators, you generally don't want my curriculum. A lot of times you may start off with it, but you realize pretty quickly that you wanna do your own thing. So being able to help support you in doing your own thing and designing curriculum that may be a little bit more interest-based or how to utilize technology to make it a little bit more passion-based or make it a little bit more hands-on, things like that we'll be able to, we'll be discussing in the cohort meetings and helping you guide you to the best tools for that, okay? Um, yeah, I think that that, I think that kind of ends it. Uh, oh, I did, so as you can see, that's Andrea. Um, and then Fallon is another amazing um, STEM. She has a STEM school out in Texas. Um, those are just two of the people that went through our cohort last year. And then that is kind of it on the actual presentation. Last time we had a ton of questions and feel free to use this time to like ask those, like I just have questions about micro schools or if you have questions about the application too. So that's it, thank you guys. Any questions? 
You guys can put it in chat if you want or speak out loud. That was fantastic, by the way. Well done. See the difference between me being awake and not being awake. <laughs> like... I have a question, Iman. Sure. Okay, I'm going to go. I think that's Oslin and then Jennifer yes. right after, right? Hey, oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. That was great. Um, I learned something new every time. So I have a question about the online um, offering. So, you know, so you offer in school, I mean, in person and online um, classes. Could you talk a little bit about that? Is that like separate from your, is that you, it, you as an individual or is that you, your, um, your micro school? Like so, teaching online or throughout school, or I think you mentioned. Yeah, so a little bit of it. like all three, I guess you could say. Yeah. Um. So we have the local school in Coral Springs and other ones that are opening now, local, like in person. And then we have an online school on Kind Academy's platform, like our own Zooms and things, our virtual school, basically. And then we also have an organization on OutSchool that has 16 teachers on there that teach students throughout the day, every day. Does that answer your question? Was that kind of what yes. you were curious about? Yes. Yeah. And okay. then some so of our kids you, that come to our local school, they do go online on the other days of school. Oh, okay. So that's what I so that's what I was gonna ask is that for the the online school or the virtual school. So it's for students who just want to do uh, virtual or a combination. Both. 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 Yeah. Both. We have some hybrid learners and some kids who are fully online. And then we have some kids who are fully one-to-one. -one. We have an online program there that's a one-to-one -one school too, that are fully one-to-one -one all week. Thank you, Oslin. Good question. All right, perfect. Jennifer. Hey. hey, thanks for having me here. I wanted to ask you about, is there any like scholarship application route or nope. what kind of process is that now? Nope. And then for the, uh, I, you're kind of breaking up a tiny bit, but I think what I gathered was that you were asking, is there like an application process for the scholarship? No, it's going to be done in a very like equitable, like pay what you can between zero, this and that, and then you're going to pick your number and then that's going to be it. Got it. Okay. Thank you. All right. Perfect. Yep. There's All some right. really good questions in the chat. The first Ooh. one is how do you fund slash find a space for a micro school? Oh, so from... Rochelle, do you have a meeting coming up? Do you have a uh, micro school dream coming up? Do we have another one? Yeah, we have one on the 20th. Uh, so is that Tuesday? Yeah, we yeah. do. So I can send that out to our people too. And um, because I cover a lot of that there, but I'm happy to kind of give you like the quick but I'll put the link in too. So what Iman's yes. talking about is we, about every week, Iman, me, Tom, and Lorian do a two hour, um, basically webinar that we call the Microschool Dream Summit. And we walk through sort of like the, what does all the, there's different aspects of the Microschool that we cover there. And um, I know Jen was on that, Glenda was on that. I think Oslin was on that. So hopefully that was helpful, but it seems like a, so I'll drop the link to register for that as well. Yeah. So we talk, so I, my, so my big thing is money. I talk about money a lot. <laughs> like, um, because I, 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 because I went into debt of about $40,000 when I started our, our little first nature school, I was, cause I had no real money background and I wasn't getting coaching and I didn't know anything about budgeting. Um, but I learned a lot. And, um, so I try to prevent anyone else from going down that path by saying, Hey, these are the ways that you fund this thing. Right. Um, but the big, the, the big things that I always suggest for funding it are um, first, like if you're a teacher already, or you're already making money, like to start putting money away. I know that it sounds like, you know, I know we're in a, I know we're in a depression that nobody's talking about, um, but if you can stock away, even if it's a hundred dollars a month, you know what I mean? Like that's still something towards your goal, your dream of opening this micro school crowdfunding. I'm seeing people even starting now going, Hey, I'm trying to fund this micro school. Like can you please add some money to my GoFundMe? Add some money to my spot fund. This is my dream. This is uh, Tanya Kipe. I don't know if you guys know her. She's been uh, accepting donations for like two years at this point, and I think a year or two. Um, and that's towards like a building. She wants like a huge, you know, and she's working towards it. So those are the kind of things. Um, another thing that I generally suggest is like opening up workshops. Like we started off as a nature school workshop program for moms and kids or adults and their kids. And um, every week I would put away a certain amount of money towards that. Also, just remembering that micro schools don't need to take a whole lot of money. I like to tell people like you really can. We, I started it with $100 and then just kind of like got ran away with, with spending more than I had. Um, but technically, you really can do it on a budget, um, especially if you already have a space available like out of your home. Uh, tutoring is another big one that I generally suggest if you're an educator already. Tutor. Tutor online. 
uh, that will help you to find your people. And then I also suggest, and I'm like giving all of it away, like, but this is like still the quick version. Um, yeah. And then the final thing that I generally suggest uh, to come to funding your micro school is um, getting fa having founding families, having people pay up front, saying, hey, you'll save a bunch of money if you pay now. And then that will help to kind of have money in your bucket for when it's time to uh, launch your micro school. So, yeah. Iman, I love all that. So that answered the, how do you fund? And then how do you find? Cause the, both of those were in Robin's question. I didn't see that part. I'm trying to, I, and I only mean that, what do you mean? How do you find? How do you find a space? So she said, how do you fund? Oh, slash how do you find space? space. Ooh, you did the, how do you space fund? Is fun. Rochelle, you did the space. Rochelle did the space, uh, the space. She taught our, our cohort last semester, how to, how to find space. I think um, there's, a, there's a lot of opportunities. One is I, and there's still some conversation about whether or not micro schools can be run in homes in Florida and receive PEP. So that's a that's something we're figuring out. Um, it depends on what you're, if you, I think there's two things to think about. One is, does it matter to you have your own space, which is going to cost you more, or does it matter to you to, to not have it cost a lot? And then you'll probably need to share space in some way, whether it's with a church, a dance studio, a gymnastic center, um, you know, a community center. Uh, there are pros and cons to both. The, the con of your own space is it's more expensive. The pro is you don't have to put stuff away at the end of the day, you know? So it's really figuring out like, what is my budget? How, what am I going to be able to afford? Which if you come to the dream summit, Amon goes through a whole budgeting thing and has a tool, but understanding that the two biggest expenses of your micro school are going to be the space and the adults. Um, and the more, the less you can spend on space up front, in that initial round of it, if you do a library, if you do a park, you know, like getting really, really creative. Um, I have been in South Florida in September and I don't know if you could always have an outside situation. Oh no, we were only- um, I've never we, seen we rain stopped. like that. <laughs> yeah, we, we stopped in May. We were always done by May and didn't start back up until October. Got it. I was party. in the rainy season. I was like, these raindrops are bigger than an, one raindrop was more rain than I get in Phoenix in a month. So um, yeah. Anyway, so it's space, I think just getting really thoughtful about who is already serving children and is empty during the day because kids are in school and, and any place like that may be an opportunity for a partnership that could be really cool for you. So mm -hmm. those are some of the ideas that we have about space. Yeah. Yeah. I feel the next like the question, um, Glenn, uh, yeah, oh, by next week, next week, people will start reaching, we'll start reaching out to you by next week. Yeah. Thank you. I filled out an application a couple of weeks ago. Before the questionnaire, how do I know I got accepted or not was Glenda's question. So yeah, by next week to answer that for everyone. How do I know if my community is ready for a micro school concept? Homeschooling groups. Jump into those homeschooling groups. If you don't have a homeschooling group, start a homeschooling group. So like, I, I, for real. So Port St. Lucie, Yorel is a, home, is a micro school owner up there in our cohort. And she started a Port St. Lucie homeschooling group. And within like two months, it was like 500 people. And, cause no, and nobody else had a group yet. And like now everybody's in there like, oh, we're starting a micro school here, but nobody, but if you go to your city, Facebook, your city or whatever, your county or whatever, look up your homeschool groups, get into five of those groups if you can, even start one if you can, because that's going to be great promotion and, and look around go, hey, like look for the other programs that may be there and start asking questions in the groups. Be really, really clear on what you're doing though. Like homeschoolers are very smart. Usually like, don't try to sell me something unless I know what it is kind of like. So be honest, I'm a parent. I'm thinking about starting this thing. I'm a teacher. I'm thinking about starting this thing. What kind of thing? Ask them questions. Like, do you have another suggestion on that, Rochelle? I do because one of the things I've noticed, and I don't know if it's the same for you. And I would say, kind of surprisingly to a lot of people, and I would say the majority, but I'm not saying 100%, the majority of people that we've seen join micro schools are not coming from the homeschool community. Um, they're, they're people, and I'm not saying that homeschoolers don't join micro schools, but a lot of times homeschoolers feel very competent. They've got it there. So I I would say there are three categories of homeschoolers that are ripe for, um, for micro schools. One is the accidental slash emergency homeschooler. Um, they just, I just met with one, a woman in North Carolina, and it was because her first grader's soul was being absolutely annihilated by his experience at school. And she was like, I, and everyone around her was like, you can't not have him in school. And he, the problem is him. And, you know, so, so she's now homeschooling single mom was never intending on that. So that kind of person, um, the overwhelmed homeschooler for whatever reason, maybe they had mm -hmm. a new baby, maybe, and then the tired homeschooler, they've been do doing this really well for a long time. And they're just like tired of it. 
the people who are outside of the homeschool world that will do this are the ones that would love to, but can't pull it off. Either they, you know, they just like, they love the idea of homeschool. They can't do it for themselves, for their own kids. And, um, and also again, the ones who have, they were like lifelong public school advocates. And then all of a sudden they have this kid that the system is breaking and, mm -hmm. and suddenly it's way more important to save their kid than to support the system. And so I think figuring out how to articulate those things to the people around you become really important. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Rochelle. You kind of triggered some thought. I serve, I serve homeschoolers. I always have. So my brain is always, but there is a reality too. And I, and I actually like half of our families are probably homeschoolers. The other half, they are, they are, were in a public school or coming from a public school um, or their parents are like dual income and they would have been putting them in a private school, but then they saw this even smaller environment than the typical private schools and a more affordable one. And they said, Hey, like, there's nothing wrong with that. Or I'm interested in doing it that way too. So you kind of have, um, getting those families, usually you're looking at weekends, right? You're looking at maybe an open house, like during the weekend, or maybe a workshop during the weekend, usually something at like the library during the weekend would be helpful for kind of seeing if those people are interested in what you're planning on doing. So, yeah. All right. Uh, yes. Yes. The money part is always a thing, ma'am. I think that might've been it on questions. Am I tripping? I think that's it. That's all we've, that's all we've gotten so far. Does anybody, you did do a really good job of presenting this whole thing. So that's I'm going to say. It. Yeah. And I know Rochelle did in the beginning because I, I, <laughs> I automatically assume that everybody knows we're committed to diversity in our program. So I don't like usually say it. And I, I forget that we're in a world where some can be committed to diversity, but aren't ready for that. Um, but we are, you know, really, really huge on serving. Uh, we're in the state of Florida. So like, I know I have to lead with that. So we're very big on serving students who need to see themselves in their history. Um, we're very big on serving students who don't see themselves in the classroom or students who may um, who their parents are not allowed to have a rainbow flag or they've been in trouble because they've had a rainbow flag uh, in their classroom, things like that. So we serve the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, we have students who come to us who just were being bullied or they were running into issues or they were afraid that they could be harmed or taken away because of this thing. Um, so that was one thing that we always were committed to. Like generally when we started in the homeschool world, I was the only person who looked like me and, um, in most of the groups. And I was like, well, like, I want to have a program that, you know, other people look like me too. And, um, that was a big kind of, um, that, that became what people knew us for, at least in our area. So we are very, very huge on serving everybody and loving everybody and making sure that as long as you, as long as you understand that children are the future and as long as you understand that children are amazing and you treat them as such, like you are welcome in our space. So that's who we are. Yeah. Any other questions, comments, anything else? I'm super excited, y'all. Like, this is a good group. I can already tell, like, I can already tell we're going to have a good amount of people out of this group. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited to see your applications. I think you put it in the chat so they mm -hmm. have access to that. I'm super excited to see and, and read through whatever you guys have. And I think that's it. Um, I am going to, I did record this. Uh, I'll say that I'm going to send it out, but you probably will need to request it because, like, <laughs> that's my life. Um, but I'm probably going to put it up on YouTube, possibly, maybe, I don't know, um, too. But please reach out if you have any other questions for me. We're happy to help. I And I would say if you aren't sure, fill out the application. You know, if you're like, I don't know if I can do this, fill out the application. If what's in there makes sense for what kind is offering, we'll do an interview and I can help you know if this makes sense for you. Like we can walk through that. And um, but like. If you aren't a certified teacher, you can do this. Like I just met with a woman that's been teaching kids yoga for a really long time. And she yes. was like, everyone's always been like, you need to be a teacher. And she's like, I know that's my TikTok for the day. Somebody literally just asked me, do I need a bachelor's in education? And I was like, no, like, like I have to de-school people who come. And I, if you do have a degree, great. But a lot of times the, the conversations I have to have with teachers versus like, you know, somebody who's been in non-traditional uh, are a little bit different, you know? So, yeah. totally. so just know, like when you're looking at yourself in the mirror, like you could change lives. You could be that, you know, there's all the evidence of kids need one, one helpful adult, one loving adult to make an impact in their life. Be that, like be that. And we can help you figure out how, and it makes me super excited. 
Oh, it's so nice to meet you all. Like, I cannot wait to see your applications. All right, people, I'm going to go ahead and say my goodbyes. Thank you so, so much for coming. Rochelle, I love you. Thank you so much for hanging with me. Bye, everyone. I hope to see you Bye. guys soon again. Bye. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Sure.